Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Content produced in this episode and other episodes of the Bulldog Educator are by my co-producers, Sarah and David Galvez. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Content produced in this episode and other episodes of the Bulldog Educator are by my co-producers, Sarah and David Galvez. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Welcome to the Bulldog Educator, Episode 2, Season 1, with your host, yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about some of the influencers I've had over the years um, as a person, and as an educator. I apologize at the beginning of this if it gets a tad listy. Um, I will stop from time to time and possibly give an explanation to some of the influencers, and some of them I will just mention. Um, but I'm hoping through the process of sharing some of the influencers, that uh, the power and the impact that it's had on me over m- the course of many years, um, it might bring some insight into who I am and help you as a, a listening audience connect better with me, but also may give you some ideas of some influencers you may want to go and check out for yourself. So without further ado, I'm going to start off in no particular chronological order, but more um, just sharing from the heart. Some people that have really had an impact on me is when I started to um, investigate the whole idea of Genius Hour. And that started shortly after my journey on Twitter in 2013. And I came across uh, the hashtag Teach Like a Pirate. I didn't even know that it was a book by Dave Burgess at the time. And um, joined in on the chat shortly after joining on the chat. I um, bought the book and began reading it and started to learn about what a genius hour was. And from that, I um, became uh, Twitter uh, connected with Joy Kerr and AJ Giuliani. And um, that just led to a whole lot of other connections um, throughout Twitter. Um, And if you're in education, the names I'm about to list are probably some that you may be familiar with as well. And if you're not, I highly encourage you to. And so some of those people that I came into contact by that initial uh, Twitter chat with Teach Like a Pirate was Tony Sinaias, Joe Sanfilippo, and I apologize if I don't pronounce these names correctly, Thomas Murray, Brad Gustafson, and Jimmy Casas. Um, And then recently, I have been connected to John Spencer through A.J. Giuliani um, with the book that they wrote together called Launch and um, actually have plans to read um, both that book and his most recent book. Um, Some other books that maybe are a little bit more academic in nature um, that I've read are The Practice of Authentic PLC by Daniel Venables, which had a huge impact on me as a teacher leader um, as I was learning how PLCs were to be conducted and the importance of that time for teachers to connect and talk about student work and talk about students and do they get it and how do you know. Um, That was very impactful for me. Another part um, or person that has been a huge impact impact on me probably the last five years is the work of John Hattie and his impact on student learning. And really, um, as I came into a um, instructional leader's role as an administrator, um, just the importance of providing the opportunity for teachers to collaborate and um, really dig deep into that collective efficacy piece. Uh, another book that had has been a huge impact on me, both in my own desires and drives to pursue my passions, but also in discovering, um, helping students and, and other educators uh, determine their passions was Drive by Daniel Pink, um, which had a huge impact 
um, and kind of a shift for me in education. During this same period of time, um, when I first came onto Twitter, I was introduced to the book Role Reversal by Mark Barnes. And um, this was about throwing out grades and uh, the whole idea of uh, students evaluating their own work and determining their own mastery of content. And this really made me take a hard look at some of the things that we have firmly established um, in the way we grade and what are we grading for and what is the purpose and um, what is feedback and the role of student voice in driving achievement. Another person that's had a huge impact on me um, as I developed as a leader and as an instructional coach with uh, other adult learners was Thomas Van Solen. One of the things that um, really had a huge impact on me from him was seeing how he utilized the protocols um, that are out there um, and how he used those protocols, not just in regards to student work and conversations about student work, but also in the development of a team. Uh, another book that was huge to me that that went right along with John Hattie's work is the work of Jenny Donahue with collective efficacy. And that book had a huge impact on me and understanding the importance of providing that space for teachers to um, develop that collective efficacy. In my leadership and really understanding the importance of positive leadership, uh, I came across John Gordon and I think I've read every book um, that I can get my hands on of his. But the first book that I read by him was The Energy Bus. And his books are not hard to read. They're easy. They go quick. And he makes some really good practical points on how you manage yourself and your mindset, but also how you recognize how to coach others and understanding their mindsets as well. Um, as I moved forward and really became more of a, a role in helping organi my organizations develop their goals, I read The Four Disciplines of Execution by McChesney, Sean Covey, and Hewling. And that wildly important goal that you should have both as an organization, as an individual, and how you break that down and achieve those goals, um, and just the science of it was a huge impact on me. I've also really become a student of myself. And I know that might sound strange, but I have learned that if I don't know myself and my own motivations and where I operate from and what those strengths are, then I don't have a lot of focus or direction with the people I lead. And I need to be confident in that because when I exude confidence and humility at the same time, people will trust me more than if I'm unsure about myself or the direction I'm going. And one of the first areas that I started to really do that self-study is through any of the Strength Finder books. Um, one of the first ones is um, Teaching to Your Strengths. There's been others that I've taken along the way, and they've really helped me to identify who I am. As a teacher who I taught writing in seventh grade, fifth grade, and third grade, one of the most impactful books that I've read and also professional development um, workshops that I've been to was when it was led by Penny Kittle. And she's a second, she talks more about secondary and leading students in secondary education with their writing. But the whole idea of sitting with the students and writing with the students and being in the same place with them and how that you can bring out more from the students when you're with them in it, um, the way that she did that and showed how to model that as an educator to this day still has impacted me in the way that I lead and whatever I do, regardless if it's writing or another um, type of concept that I'm trying to help both my, uh, my students and help my um, adult learners. 
Um, I went through some coaching classes um, a few years back, and the book that went with that, Results Coaching, it was so impactful. And I actually got to meet all of the authors of this book, which were Key, Anderson, Deering, Harris, and Schuster. And they were absolutely amazing. And to this day, I still remember Kathy Key and just the way that she immediately connected with the room and every single one in the room, like you felt like you were the most important person in the room. And that has stuck with me for many years about the importance of making every individual that you come into contact with feeling like they are, you are fully present with them and that they are the most important person in the room to the point that they are the person they are the reason that you get up in the morning and how that builds that sense of belonging and it's so important I've also been doing some self-study through Brene Brown in the last couple of years. I've read her books. I started off with uh, Dare to Lead because I was wanting to lead with more intention, with more clarity, and with more vulnerability. But what I found as I read that is that I needed to do more of a work on myself and um, read the book Daring Greatly. If you're one of those people that hasn't dove in to anything with Brene Brown, I would highly recommend you bring um, start with the Netflix special um, her and her TED Talks. She also recently um, came out with a podcast, and that is a great listen as well. Some other people um, or books that have had a huge, a huge impact on me was Collaborative Leadership by Peter DeWitt. And then there are some people that I have recently come into contact with. And I mentioned before that I have um, been on Twitter here and there. Um, but one of the Twitter chats that really, um, a couple years ago, I moved from Texas to Arkansas. And when I did... One of the ways that I started to connect with other educators across the state of Arkansas is through a Twitter chat called hashtag EDUAR or EDUR. And those chat EDU sisters, Lindsay Bowler, Karen Norton, and Bethany Hill, who Bethany also um, is behind the hashtag Joyful Leaders, just embraced me in that space. And I have since met Lindsay and Karen face to face. And Karen is actually um, been a huge supporter of the Bulldog Educator podcast. And it has been such a blessing for to have those fellow sisters in education come alongside and champion for me. And that has been a huge impact on me as well. One of the things that as I came from Texas to Arkansas, I wanted to have a shift in how I cared for myself and take care of myself. And um, I kind of struggled with that until recently I met a wonderful fellow educator, Tina Bugren. And if you haven't met her or come to know her, there's a couple of places you can find her. She has a Facebook page called Self-Care for Educators on and then there are two books that she's written. There's the Take Time for You and then the 180 Days of Self-Care. Both of those are really phenomenal at helping you break down and finding strategies to take care of yourself. And she uses the analogy of um, when you're on a plane, they instruct the adults on the plane to put their oxygen mask on themselves first before they put it on um a, a child or an elderly parent um, that they're taking care of. Um, in the same way, educators tend to forget to put their own oxygen mask on before they take care of others, and then they are depleted and they can't help others to the best of their ability. And so that's something that I have really been working towards is that self-care so that I can care for others. Another thing that I've discovered in the last two years um, with quite the abandon are podcasts. And I do listen to a few educational podcasts, but this is also a time that I listen to podcasts to feed my soul. And some of the people that I listen to are that that sounds fun by Annie F. Downs. 
and your Enneagram coach, and you'll learn a little bit more in a bit about how, how the Enneagram has infected me, but affected me. But your Enneagram coach by Beth and Jeff McCord. I'm also utilizing a um, an app um, called the Bible Recap, um, but that's a podcast that takes you through the Bible in a year, and that's led by Tara Lee Cobble, and that is. How I start my um, morning every morning is reading the Bible and then listening to Tara, to Tara Lee Cobble's Bible recap. And it just is a great way for me to start my day. Another podcast that has recently been released that I am enjoying is called The Fathoms. And it's hosted by three guys who have a really deep academic understanding of um, the Enneagram and an intellectual understanding of the Enneagram. And I will tell you um, from time to time, it kind of goes over my head, but I am very intrigued with what they have to say. And I always want to learn more because I love the depth at which they cover it. I'm also discovering some other podcasts that are having a huge impact on me and my perception of the world. And that's the new activist by the International Justice Mission. Um, the other podcast in this one is a staple for me um, is the innovator's mindset by George Kuros. And I'll just have to be honest. Um, when I mentioned educators that had a huge impact on me earlier and I listed some off, I left George out because George really uh, deserves a space all by itself. George is someone that I've been following since 2013. And I have probably seen him speak over the course of the last seven years, probably a dozen times um, every time I see him speak, um, he takes time to take a selfie, ask me how I'm doing. Um, and it's wonderful to follow him and just his growth and change and how transparent and vulnerable he is with that and how he encourages educators, both in the classroom and administrators, leading educators in the classroom and um, I continue to be one of his biggest fans. Um, his book, The Innovator's Mindset, is probably the only book I could say that I've read five times. I'm not one to read a book more than once. And I know, and I'm on the sixth time this summer reading it as I'm taking my faculty through the book study of The Innovator's Mindset. He also has um, written the book with Katie Novak, Innovate Inside the Box, which is huge. And I'm about to do a third raid through with that with my innovation committee this fall. Another podcast that I love listening to, and I don't listen to it all the time, but when I do, I'm always glad I do. And it's the TED Radio Hour. And then a podcast that I mentioned before briefly um, is the podcast with um, Brene Brown called Unlocking Us. And you just can't go around with Brene. Brene. And um, some other people on top of podcasts and books that have had a huge impact with me over the years are, of course, my first teacher, which was my mother, uh, my Aunt Rachel, who uh, taught me or attempted to teach me how to sew and has just embraced me as a woman of strength. My third grade teacher, Mrs. Mays, my journalism teacher, my senior year in high school, Miss Akins, uh, my best friend since I was three from across the street on Orchard Drive, Leanne Lovett, and my best high school friend and college roommate, Michelle Parks. And when I did my student teaching, my teacher sponsor, O.C. Campbell, all of these people have had a fundamental influence on who I am and how I've developed as a person and a teacher. I could be, couldn't leave this person out, but as of this summer, I will have been married July 23rd for 26 years. And that's my husband, Eric, who has had a profound impact on me. And some educators that I have come into contact with over the years, including Chris McCain. And she has had such a profound impact on me that her oldest daughter, my daughter is named after her oldest daughter um, because of just how much she's meant to me. One of my very first colleagues when I first started teaching, Shirley Richardson, 
one of my very first administrator colleagues that took time to invest in me was Francine Halliburton. And then one of the very first parents of one of my students who I became friends with, Jan Goring, who took me under wing and when I became a mom myself, really encouraged me, built confidence in me, and basically told me, you've got this. Um, A friend of mine who we've become mothers together, uh, we parented together, we haven't seen each other in a um, few years, but our girls are the same, my oldest and her oldest are the same age, is Jenny Pulley. I took a little bit of time, and if you listen to my introductory podcast, you know this, took a little bit of time off to be at home with my kids. And when I came back to teaching, uh, I came back at the same time one of my colleagues came into teaching for the first time. She had been a lawyer in another state, and her and her husband had moved to Texas, and then she got her teaching license through an alternative certification, and we both at the same time came into teaching both teaching third grade, Amy Ebert. And Amy is just one of these very, very special people who was an amazing teacher. She had such uh, charisma about her. She made funny so, uh, learning so fun. And at one point, she became a kindergarten teacher at the very time my son went into kindergarten and she was my son's kindergarten teacher. And we all know how important that kindergarten teacher is in the beginning of a child's education. And she did a phenomenal job of just bringing out the learning desires of my son. And I can't thank her enough for that. Other people that have had an impact on me was um, my principal when I taught at that elementary school that Amy and I taught with, Dr. Michael Griffin. My um, campus instructional coach, uh, Jamie McAllister, who helped me understand how to teach math at a conceptual level like I had never done before to the point that I felt confident as a teacher teaching third graders fractions and doing it well and with confidence. And then friends and colleagues who we did life together who had a huge impact on me and um, being just good friends and champions for me. And we raised kids together and that was Sherry Daniel and Amber Mills. And then my instructional technology specialist days, uh, I had a wonderful both colleague and then she later became a um, supervisor through our department was Kara Carter. And then another just huge example to me outside of education, but she actually has education as well as I do um, and champions for a very important cause. Um, She does what's called the rare fair. Her name is Eden Lord and her daughter is Cambria and Cambria and I were connected through the I run for organization Um, Campria has a rare um, disease and she has a um, suppressed immune system. And I got to know this dear family and Eden and Campria have taught me so much about enjoying the moment, having a strong faith and just being optimistic in spite of so many things that can make you think this, this is, you can be. Uh, I also have a couple of kids that came into my life when they were in third grade, a a twin boy and girl, and they have always held a special place in my heart. They could not be two more different uh, kiddos coming from the same mom, and they both learn very differently, but they both were great learners, super intelligent, and just showed me so many things about how kids learn, and that was Savannah and Blake Jones. Uh, Another kiddo that's had a huge impact on me, and it's probably because he's my daughter's best and closest friend, Riley Shelley, who has taught me so much about life and acceptance and love and 
I just, I can't say enough about him, um, and mostly because he loves my daughter unconditionally as a close friend. And so thank you, Riley, for being that example. And other influences are my two children, uh, Critter and Emery. And Critter is probably going to be upset with me because he would rather me call him Chris or Christopher. But these two kiddos, and I'm not just saying that it's because I'm in their mom, but they're amazing kids and they both love to learn and they have this insatiable curiosity and they just amaze me every day the way that they hold on to life with both hands. And they are gracious enough to let me be a part of their life in such a way that I've gotten to know their friends too. And their friends have had such an impact on me as well. A few more friends that I want to mention and both and their colleagues as well that have had a huge impact on me. Um, they're the kind of friends that they listen, but they ask questions. They don't just accept what I say by face value, but they dig a little deeper and sometimes they make things uncomfortable. And honestly, I'm thankful for that. And that's Becky Mills and Mindy Looney, Brad Goodnight, and Tanya Bloodworth. And each of them in their own way have shown me strength. They've shown me different perspectives. They've come alongside me and supported me loyally. And they also call me out when I need to be. And it's been such a blessing to have them in my life um, because I need people like that so I can continue to grow. And I would like to close this off by telling you guys that I have mentioned before that this podcast is about a lot of things and there'll be a lot of influences that you'll see over time that come through. Um, but I cannot do this podcast without the element of my faith. My faith has been with me for a very long time and that faith, that personal relationship I have with Jesus and that faith walk is such an enmeshed part of who I am that it will be part of how the content is presented through this podcast. So as I shared these influencers that I had in my life, I hope that you got to know me a little bit better. If you have questions, please reach out to me. You can do it through the different uh, social media platforms that you can find the Bulldog Educator on, and that's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the Bulldog Edu. I also plan to do a blog post where I will link some of the books that I've mentioned or connections that I've mentioned, not all of them, but some of them that were mentioned today in this podcast. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and I look forward to our next podcast where we'll be talking a little bit more about self-care. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Bulldog Educator, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find The Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at the Bulldog EDU. That's at the Bulldog EDU. You can also find us in content related to education in this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org. Hi, listeners. I wanted to share with you something that is going on, and this is really pertinent right now. I am doing this advertisement as part of a charitable initiative in partnership with Ballot Ready, and I'm not getting any um, money with this. This is an unpaid opportunity, but I really wanted to share with you. The goal of this initiative is to increase voter education and encourage you guys to get the vote out during the 2020 general election this November. Ballot Ready is a nonpartisan voter guide to every race and referendum. Most voters, you guys, will enter the booth knowing who you want to vote for president or governor or senator, but you're not prepared for everything else. But every position on the ballot matters. Judges, school boards, water commissioners, and city councils make the decisions that affect our everyday lives. A voter who goes to BallotReady.org can enter their address to see their entire ballot, and from there they can compare candidates based on stances, on issues, biography, or endorsements. Once they've made a decision, they can save their choices and use that when you go to the polls to vote. Voters can also use 
a requ um, also request a ballot to vote by mail and find their polling place and make a plan to vote. I hope that you'll take advantage of this. I know I'm going to because this and every opportunity to vote is the way that we continue to make sure that our voices are heard and that we are well represented. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Bulldog Educator hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find the Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at the Bulldog EDU. That's at the Bulldog EDU. You can also find us in content related to education and this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org.